Welcome to IPA with a CPA. We're here to share ideas to help you and your business make more money and keep more of the money you make. Hi, I'm Paul Mueller. And I'm Robin Pye. Paul and I are CPAs and owners of Mueller Pye & Associates with offices in Northern Colorado and Katy, Texas. Today's topic is about the new qualified business income deduction that came out of the Tax Reform Act. Robin, this is a probably the biggest item in the tax reform bill that probably impacts yes. the greatest number of our clients. Right, and I'm anxious to talk about it, but I want to talk about beer first. Absolutely. So we're at we're at Verboten Brewery mm -hmm. in historic downtown Loveland, right. and today we have the Milkshake Imperial mm -hmm. IPA. All right, let's give it a let's taste. It I like try. the way that sounds. Cheers. Mmm, it's good. It's very hoppy. It's a little hoppy, but the yeah. milkshake part of it just smooths it out a little Tames bit. Tames it a little bit. Yeah. All right, let's hop to it. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Okay, right. well, let's talk about this new qualified business okay. income deduction and where the heck did it come from? So in the Tax Reform Act, they gave a huge tax cut to the C corporations, the right. really big, large corporations. That tax cut was 40% uh, right. for, some, for some people. Uh, they also got rid of this thing called the Domestic Production Activities Deduction, which was essentially a 9% write-off for profits from a manufacturing activity. Right. It was horribly complex, and frankly, I'm glad to see it go. Well, I am too, but they replaced it with something that's even more complex. Which is what we're going to talk which about, is and that is the Qualified about. Business Income Deduction. Yeah. So run us through the, the basic rules. Okay, so the deduction is it's 20% of net profit from pass-through income from sole proprietorships, partnerships, LLCs and S corporations. Okay. Okay. Rental real estates can qualify. Okay. If that activity rises to the level of a trade or business. How do we know? It's very subjective. Okay. So um, it's it's um, yeah so individualized that we we can't possibly cover all of that. And we really don't have session. any guidance. To we go don't on have there. guidance. Yeah. We're still waiting on guidance from yeah. the IRS. You know, and the other yeah. thing the other thing that makes this complex is so much of the information about what is qualified business income and the types of businesses that qualify for it. That's all determined at the entity level, at right. the flow through entity level, yet the deduction is actually claimed on the personal tax return. Right. And then you've got a whole host of other limitations that play into that. And so it really mm -hmm. creates a lot of uncertainty as to how it's really yeah. going to play out. So the first question I think is who is eligible? Okay. okay. W-2 employees, not eligible. Okay. Um, and then there are certain service businesses that are eligible, but there are additional limitations that apply to those service and businesses. And service businesses like being? Health, law. Accounting, us, uh -huh, oh, us. Um, uh, investment management, athletes, mm -hmm. and then there's a carve out for architects and engineers. They're not subject to these additional limitations. They get they so, they, they get to enjoy the general rule. They do. On they this. get to enjoy wow. the general rule. Okay. So, yeah. So we weren't at the table, I guess, to make I sure we got not. carved out of that. I but anyway, so, so yeah. the, the 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 exception that for the service businesses to qualify for that 20% deduction isn't all that onerous. Right. But it's really based on the taxable income on the owner's tax return. Correct. That's what makes this so confusing. Right. Uh, so if you have a service business that's owned by somebody mm -hmm. and they file a joint income tax return, mm -hmm. as long as that taxable income is below 315000 right. they get the full write-off of the 20%. Correct. Above that 315000 they start losing it. And yes. once that joint taxable income gets above 415000 right. it's gone. They Correct. don't get any of that 20%. Uh, that's deduction. Right. So that's yeah, that, right. that's a big loser. So uh, it is a big loser. So um, and again, so complicated because you've got to, you know, you've got to look at each individual taxpayer. So you mm -hmm. could have an entity owned by multiple um, taxpayers, and everybody could end up with a different, with a different result, result. With a different yeah. result. Yeah. yeah. Um, so issues to consider when we're talking about this is: is your current entity structure the most efficient, or mm -hmm. do you need to change and, and operate as something else? Well, and you did put that software program together for mm -hmm. us, and we ran a lot of those analysis for folks that were able to tell them with some relative level of certainty whether yeah. they needed to stay in S corp or yeah. look at another type of entity. And we had surprising results. We did get some yeah. surprising results. Yeah. Um, you know, payroll impacts this calculation, so a sole proprietorship is going to get a greater 20% deduction mm -hmm. than that same company operating as an S corporation because there's no payroll factor. And with an S corp, you have to pay some kind of reasonable compensation right. to the owner. And payroll factors into that net profit of the entity. And that so. reduces the 20. So now you have this balance right. of payroll yes. versus losing the 20% yes. deduction. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's no one size fits all. Yeah. So very individualized. Um, and, and it's like you said, you could have an entity with multiple owners. And you had one. And I, had, I did have a partnership yeah. with three owners and the result Results were different yeah. on all three of the owners, yeah. so it just yeah. makes it complicated. At the end of the day, you've got to run the numbers and, run and the see, numbers. see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Robin and I hope you found this information useful. 
Be sure to send us an email with any comments, questions, or suggestions for future topics. And be sure to check back on our YouTube channel for the next IPA with a CPA. Until next time. Prost. Prost. <laughs>